Hello lovelies, welcome to Avalon Princess TV, a weekly connection with all things Avalon. And today's a quick one, and today I wanted to talk about who would the ancient priestesses of Avalon have worshipped? Now, when we're thinking about the priestesses of Avalon, we're thinking about the women in the ancient Celtic past who would have been working and worshipping the great goddess and doing her work in the world, okay? And do we know how they did this? Nope. Do we have any evidence that they existed? Not really. Do we have any helpful hints from leftover stories? We do, but they're very difficult to narrow down on because the ancient Celts did not write stuff down. So everything we know about their old society, their particularly their religion, who they worshipped, who was important to them, how they did it, is all in itty bitty fragments passed down from medieval clerics, okay? And this is medieval clerics. The times we're talking about are 500 years previously and longer, okay? So, who would the Avalonian priestesses have worshipped? Nowadays, um, as an Avalonian priestess, I worship and venerate and am guided by Morgan Le Fay and um, many others are worshipping and venerating ancient goddesses who would have been on these lands like Brownwen, Keridwen, um, Rhiannon, Arianrod and these are the ancient Welsh goddesses that come down to us through the Mabinogi and the Mabinogi is a medieval text that was written by Christian clerics to preserve the folklore and folk tales of the ancient Welsh people mm -hmm. And by folklore and folk tales, we are kind of figuring that they mean, oh, these were the stories of the old religion that used to be here. These are the mythologies of the old Celtic peoples that we're not going to say are mythologies because everything but God and Jesus is evil. So we're going to turn them into stories. And it's very tricky to pinpoint what is, um, who is a goddess, who is a god, who is a story, who is a historical character, because you do have historical characters woven into the Mabinogi. But the Mabinogi is our source for this. And we think that in ancient times, the priestesses of Avalon would have worshipped these Welsh goddesses and gods at the same time. So these goddesses would have been people, goddesses like Rhiannon, who is the ancient Welsh goddess of sovereignty. And she was also a horse goddess. So she may have been worshipped and she also was um, syncretized with the Roman Epona who was the Celtic, by Celtic now I mean all over Europe, the horse goddess of Europe who has many different faces. So they may have worshipped Rhiannon, they may have worshipped Arianrod, the goddess of the stars, they may have worshipped Branwen, they may have worshipped Blodaiweth, the maiden goddess, the lover, the maiden, the wild feminine. And also, I really strongly think, and one of my teachers, Diana Dubrow, really believes that um, the ancient priestesses of Avalon would have really had a real thing for Keridwen as their goddess. Now hear me out here. Keridwen, um, in modern times, tends to be relegated to this version of crone. She's a crone. She rhymes with Kaliach, so she gets croned. But she was a great mother goddess of the Celts. She was nurturing, she was loving, she was wise, she was a herbalist. She was kind of everything that Morgan Le Fay is to us now. A goddess of transformation, a mother, a great healer, and a source of comfort in the wild, yeah? So I really feel like it is likely that the ancient priestesses of Avalon may have really worshipped Caridwen because she would have stood for a lot of what they do, I believe. Herbcraft, healing. Um, they may have also worshipped Bridget as well, but I feel that was more Irish. Um, Herbcraft, healing, magic, prophecy, all this stuff. Caridwen would have probably been a very big influence. So those are my thoughts on it. I think that the ancient priestesses of Avalon would have worshipped the Welsh goddesses. I think they might have had a particular emphasis on Caridwen or another goddess who was that, who was wise. They would have interacted with the gods. I mean, today we have this goddess spirituality system where we're all ladies all the time and we don't, but we're not so much with the dudes, but 
I think in ancient world they would have been very respectful of merging with the masculine and the feminine energy because that's a really big part of Avalon that I'll get into in a future Avalon Priestess TV episode. And I feel like the ancient priestesses of Avalon, it's a different world for them because they would have lived on the land, in the land, in completely enveloped in the wilds and the nature of the goddess in her winds, depending on her herbs, depending on the water and the animals and the tending of the crops, it would have been a very different relationship than what we have now with our magical cars and magical supermarkets or we don't have to deal with any of the tricky stuff of making a living from the earth. So I feel like their relationship with the goddess would have been a lot more low key and more just a part of everyday life. It's not that they necessarily would have worshipped in like they did in Greece for example where they had the great big temples and venerations we don't have any of that in Celtic we don't have any of those remains from the Celtic era we don't have great temples unless that's what stone circles were we don't have great statues of the goddesses because we think that we found them really deeply in nature and that connection with nature and the natural world is where they connected with the goddess so that's what I believe and who I believe the ancient Avalonian priestesses venerated. And I would love to know what you think. Who do you think the Avalonian priestesses of your worshipped? Who were their main goddesses? What did they do? Who were the faces of the goddess who were important to the Avalonian priestesses, in your opinion? I would love, love, love to hear. And I would love to tell you that if you'd like to learn more about Avalon, I have a free class called the seven priestess arts of avalon i think i'll pop a link below very very soon so you can sign up for that beautiful free guidebook to learn about avalon and also i have lots of avalon delicious goodies deepening into the magic of avalon including short courses year-long priestess trainings three year-long priestess trainings if that's what you're down for so hang around it's lovely to meet you and i'm sending you blessings